and welcome to this week's episode of The Shooting Show. On this week's episode, we've got plenty of stalking and air gunning action for you. And a little bit later on, we head out for a Roebuck stalk with some Corvid control. But first, we join Thomas Nissen as he heads to New Zealand to help out on a feral goat cull. They load up the ute and head out, and let's see how they get on. Just arrived to this small hut on a New Zealand farm. I'm with my friend Pierre Jacobsen, and today we are going uh, to call some goats for the farmer. Here on the farm, he has big problem with goats here, and the oc occasionally pigs. So if we see pigs or goats, we can shoot, or we have to shoot because there are way too many here. Um, we're going out to um, call some goats. This um, this property's got quite a bit of a problem with goats, so um, yeah, that's the objective for today, to hopefully get quite a good number of goats. So um, let's go, Tomcat. Some viewers might not think it's hunting, and it has got absolutely nothing to do with hunting. So it's not something that's considered ethical in any way, because we're obviously using a motorized vehicle to go up to goats and just basically shoot them. Um, but it's an effective way of staying on top of the goat population um, to use motorized vehicles or helicopters or whatever you use to control the population. So that's what we're doing. Um, basically driving up to goats and then jumping out and then start shooting. Just thought I'd let you know, so no one gets offended. Total of 15 goats up there. Um, Pierre he told me that sometimes when he drive up here and he stops spotting, uh, then he know that there will be goats behind the next ridge just because of the smell. Um, sure. but there's no bad smells here. 15. gonna go for that bottom one that white and black and then that disappeared out of view and then the one up top from it that was also a nanny I was like I'm just gonna go for that one because that's the one that was best to shoot at yeah and that was the matriarch some people like to eat them I'm not a I'm not the biggest fan to be honest um, this is probably one of the better ones to shoot as well oh no it is fairly old <laughs> um, we pretty much generally leave them here, leave them for the pigs to um, to just eat on them. Um, you can collect them and, and sell them for, I think it's called dog tucker. Um, 
it's I think 60 bucks a gold or something like that. You've got to get registered. You know, get them from the hill, gut it, and the freezer in less than four hours. And it doesn't really do much for the culling side of things, of trying to stay on top of the numbers. So um, we just leave them here, leave them be. What a place to shoot them, though, eh? How many have you have you taken out here? Uh, I've probably, I think it's around about 800 now. Um, it used to be like we'd drive along on the on the track and I'd drive along on my quad bike and I'd have my shotgun in front of me and you'd be driving around a corner and here's, here'd be like eight goats on, on the track itself and you just grab the shotgun and just start blasting. That was what it used to be like pretty much. Um, but they're, they're a lot more scarce now, they're a lot more educated. Um, Unfortunately, and, but and those 800 goats uh, uh, over how long a period was it? Uh, it's about a period of two and a half years, something like that. Around about two and a half years, we've got that. N we've got that number. So, yeah. biggest day was 66 goats in one day. That was pretty good. We do shoot them from the helicopter as well, so that obviously helps a bit with cutting from the from the sky because you, you've got a better approach at them and they can't really hide. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's better. Yes, yes. Okay. Check. There's a big mob of goats right up here. There's about, I think there's about 12 of them. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a really good spot to get to because we can get, we'll go, we'll drive along over here and then we'll carry on up and pretty much walk right along the top ridge. Yeah, up, up there. Right up the very top end, uh, over there somewhere. We'll walk right up the top ridge and then we should be getting into like 50 meters of them. And then you just open fire. Rip into it. That would be my job. It'd mm. be your job, so. I have to concentrate a little bit now. Focus. A little bit, very much indeed. Hope for help from Andy. Yes. Let's go. We shall go. So, the idea is that we're going to get up there about a couple of hundred meters away from the goats and um, I'll get Tomcat into position and then I want him to take out the leading nanny so it's called in, in uh, layman's terms here it's called the matriarch um, and she's the one who who kind of runs the the mob of goats up there and if you take her out the rest of them they don't know what to do they're just running around in circles they've got no idea what to do and the way to scope out a matriarch is to just observe the goats for a wee while and see what they do. And one of them will be a bit bossy. She'll be like poking the other ones or she'll have one or two kids with her and she's like, you can see she's a dominating female. So we're gonna get Tomcat to try and get the dominating female out of, a, out of the group. And once he's done that, if there's anyone with good, good double curlers or anything like that, he can just start blasting them away and hopefully get himself a good trophy. Right here, right here. Blast that little one. Yep. Oh my god. There's another one. Right here. Yep. Yeah. I 
didn't hit record. Ah, du tager pis på mig. So, um... <laughs> to all you UK listeners. <laughs> I just said to Thomas, I said, I didn't hit record. And then he said in Danish, Ah, du tager pis på mig. Which means, you are bullshitting me. <laughs> in best Thomas Lindy style. That was awesome. He, I think he just got about eight, um, eight goats. Absolutely fantastic. It was a real good stalk. We got all the way up here and got close to within the, the goats, literally about five meters away was his first shot. It was just great, absolutely fantastic. He pretty much nailed every single shot. Every single one of them died. So um, I am most impressed with, um, with the Tomcat, the chunky Tomcat. I reckon he earned his chocolate bicky today, without a doubt. Definitely earned his chocolate bicky. Oi, what do you reckon? How was that? That was action. <laughs> we came a bit too close. <laughs> you reckon? But they were just behind the hill there and I could only see one. Dropped it and there was no one, no more. Because of the steep terrain, we couldn't see them. So when I went down, suddenly they came over the side <laughs> and guided by Pierre. He could both film and guide me. I knew which one to shoot. Andy is back on the hill. From where we shot, he has checked the animal now. And he has said the mission is completed. Actually, I think Andy, he thinks I have passed this test as a feral goat, <laughs> feral goat call shooter. I will now collect the goats. See, just to see them. It's the first time I try to take a group out, so it would be nice to see all the animals together and maybe take some meat from some of them to try that in camp. Just put, put it on your back! No, 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 it's too smelly. No, no, you'll be fine. You're smelly. <laughs> that, that's gonna be like, that's gonna be like scented perfume for you. I like cow shit more. <laughs> Dude, dude, you've been away for six weeks. It's gonna be nice on you. We will take a picture here. <laughs> One of the, the goats I was lucky to get was this Billy. And uh, I think he's not a very big one, but I think anyway, I will take him back as a trophy, as a memory to have on my wall. A memory from a successful day where that went better than I had hoped. Yeah, Tomcat, he did extremely well. He really, really, really did well. That was that was a mission well accomplished. Um, as you've probably seen, we do have a massive problem with goats up here. Um, it's just one of these things that keep on tra traversing through the mountains and they always end up on this property. And we just need to be on top of the goat population. And when we do see mobs in these sizes, anywhere from five to 20 to 30 or 40 or whatever, we want to try and obviously get rid of the whole mob. Um, so that was the objective of this hunt, it was basically to get Tomcat in and try and get him into a good comfortable position and then start blasting the, um, the goats out pretty much. We did have a plan of trying to shoot the matriarch but we ended up being a bit too stealth. We got to within about 5-8 metres of the first goat so we kind of really couldn't go past that or do too much. Um, it was basically start with the first goat and then we press on and then it was up to Tom to, to keep going on and keep shooting all the goats. And, he was really good, he followed instructions and he was very, very incredibly good, a good shot. It was um yeah most most incredible scenery and a fascinating insight there. Now we join Stuart Ebro in Warwickshire as he heads out for something a little bit more familiar. He is after some muntjac and roebuck, and with the numbers booming, he hopes to take something down in the high cover. Good morning, I'm Stuart from Warwickshire Wild Game. Welcome to the shooting show. Uh, this morning, we're out with Ollie Leeks from the shooting show. 
we're on a 600 acre block of arable ground here. Um, a lot of row, a lot of muntjac. Um, really want to focus on the muntjac here. Uh, try and get, before the veg vegetation gets too high, try and get as many shots as possible really. Um, it is getting trickier now, as you can see. You know, everything's growing and it's shooting all this warm weather and wet we're having sort of ideal growing conditions so we're uh, we'll focus on Mount Jack but obviously if the roebuck presents itself we'll uh, we'll make a call on whether it's one for the pot or not. Right we'll uh, we'll get going. why these thermals are so valuable you know this time of year crops now at a height where you know you just especially with, with the row you can't you know in that you can't see the mundi now but with the row you can just see tops of heads There's good birds like Muntjac, yeah, Row, Muntjac. Obviously using this path a lot. So we've had, we've had success this morning. Um, caught up with a, a mature muntjac doe. We were just um, sort of poking around these hedgerows on these field margins. Um, the only place you can really catch these muntjac now because of the because of the height of the crop and the the undergrowth. Um, so we're lucky enough just to catch them crossing from the hedgerow, going out into the wheat field. Um, good ones to take whole mature doe. Um, Happy, successful morning. wasn't wasn't a tricky shot. She gave us gave us time. She's perfect broadside. Um, yeah, textbook really. Doesn't often happen, but it's nice when it does. Textbook indeed. A great result for Stuart there. Now finally, Mark's off to his local dairy farm, hoping to get himself on top of some crows and some magpies. With plenty of livestock about, it's up to him to keep the numbers down. This morning I've come down to a local dairy farm to see if I could do something about the number of crows and magpies around the farm buildings. Now, being that we're shooting around livestock, an air rifle is the perfect tool for the job. This morning I brought with me the Brocock Ranger, which is probably my favourite air rifle from the Brocock range. This little rifle is in .22 and I've got an Element Helix scope on there, sports match mounts as always and I'm going to be using a PAR 007 on the back there just to record footage through. 
The one thing about hunting corvids is you really want to be up bright and early. Now, it's about half past five at the moment, and I can already hear them down at the farmyard. I've got the uh, Brocock Ranger already out and ready for action, so I'm going to drive down the track because there's quite often one or two rabbits and that along the way as well. There's one rabbit down. So I don't hit that rabbit fair and square there, it ran off to the right a few yards and it was just going around a little circle like it was just about to keel over. So I very quickly just put another shot into it and dropped it straight away, which is one of the beauties of using a multi-shot pre-charged rifle like that. It gives you a very quick follow-up shot if you need it. Well that rabbit might prove quite useful later. I might well be able to put that out and use that as bait. So as I came up to this doorway, there was a pigeon that had been feeding on the uh, cattle feed there and it flew up onto the fence and I managed to get down on one knee and just give it a nice clean headshot. So being this is a dairy farm, there's always rich pickings for crows. So they're feeding in the yard at the moment, so let's walk on the other side and have a look. So this is what these birds are feeding on, this maze here. So I'm going to find myself somewhere around the yard to set up an ambush and see what I can knock over.
So I've set myself up about 25 metres from that maze and uh, already the birds have started to show a bit of interest in coming back. Here's one. I think that was a jackdaw, but that's just landed. Here we go, they're all coming in. That's a magpie down as well. This is proving quite an effective little hide. So at the moment, I've got a dead magpie out there and uh, he's causing a bit of a raucous as you can hear but I think it's going to put him off landing so I might just nip out and pull that in Well, that actually helped. <laughs> the magpie came down, was cooling right next to it, so just wait that one as well. So we've got a cock pheasant come out feeding on the maze at the minute. But uh, not really very sporting with the air rifle, and uh, they're out of season anyway. Well, so the action's pretty much dried up here now, but I've had a good bag of magpies, which I'm really pleased about, because they can be quite difficult to control. But as you can probably hear, the tractor's now working in the yard. So I'm going to uh, head out into the fields a little bit and uh, put that rabbit out and see if I can draw in another one or two crows or magpies. Well, it's all got a little bit busy down at the farmyard there. The uh, farmer's out with his son and uh, one or two other guys working around the yard now. So I've come back up the top of the farm and I'm going to use the rabbit that I got earlier. Here's one I prepared earlier. And um, I'm going to just open that out and lay it out in the field out in full view for the magpies and uh, crows and that to spot. And I'm going to tuck myself into the hedgerow as best I can and see if I can knock over one or two more corvids. Uh, before I do that though, I'm just going to quickly top the ranger up with a little bit more air because that's I still got a fair bit in there actually, but uh, I'm just going to top it up so I get max amount of shots. So refilling the ranger is very simple. You'll notice on the bottom here, there's a hole just in this shroud on the end of the uh, cylinder there. If you turn that round, that aligns with a hole within, which is a filling port. So all we do is we take our adapter here, and insert that up into the filling port, like so, all the way home. Turn our bottle, and that's it, that's full. So just bleed that off. 
and then simply pull that out. And that is the rifle fully recharged. Now, just before I go and get set up, I can't resist a couple of practice shots. Right, so that rabbit target is out there at 30 metres. Let's have a couple of shots. Well, there's not much wrong with that. Just for a bit of fun, I'm going to have a crack at this. It's a little 2 2 rimfire case. I love this rifle. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to find yourself a good hiding place because magpies and crows are very, very sharp eyed. Now, to be honest, I'm not holding out a lot of hope for this actually working this morning because it's now probably about nine, ten o'clock and the fields have gone a little bit quiet. Ideally, you want to do this first thing in the morning, just before light if you can, get yourself hidden away and then at first light as the crows and magpies and that come in to feed hopefully they'll spot your rabbit and drop in and they will quite happily tuck into that and it gives you a very good uh, sort of ambush kind of situation where you know your range you can set yourself up and hopefully make a nice accurate shot right i found myself a little kind of hole in the hedge here i've just kicked out a little bit of a space there so um Hopefully I can tuck myself in there out of sight and I'll put the rabbit out about 30 yards away out in the field here. Alright so probably about here looks a good spot. That's around about 25 to 30 yards away. Alright let's open this rabbit up. my exceptionally blunt knife so what you want to do is you just want to get the guts exposed so I open them up like that and then tip them out a bit and stretch them around a little bit like so and you want to leave belly fur, the white belly fur facing upwards, attract attention. And also what I like to do is I like to pull out some little tufts of white fur and just let that go on the wind. And that'll uh, just help to make it look like a kind of a, a kill site, like something's already been feeding on that. There. That should attract some attention. Right, so I'm not brilliantly hidden, but I'm hoping that I'm tucked away into this uh, hedgerow enough for them to not spot me. We'll see. So you do need to be quite patient doing this. As I say, first thing in the morning is usually the best time. But um, I've had some quite good mornings in the past, like shooting magpies and crows off a bait like this.
Right, well, I've given it probably half an hour tucked in this in this hedge, surrounded by brambles and nettles, and um, I've not had anything come in, but I'm not really too worried, because I've had a good morning on the magpies and that anyway, down at the farmyard, so uh, hopefully that'll just um, give you a little tip anyway, something to try next time you're uh, out and want to try and bag a magpie or two. Right, let's see if I can get out of here without getting stung to death. So you can probably see why it is that I like the little Brocock Ranger so much. Lovely little compact rifle, looks really cool as well, very accurate, and um, it's just perfect for like little round the farmyard and stuff when you're sort of in and out of little buildings and things shooting around doorways that kind of stuff and also from shooting from a vehicle and as you can see it's proved very effective today well all in all i reckon that's been a pretty successful morning out so i hope you've enjoyed the episode thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe it's great to see this week everyone enjoying some good successes but I'm afraid that's all we've got time for on this week's episode of The Shooting Show. If you've liked what you've seen, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you're not a member of Basque, now's the time to join. My name's been Chris Castle, and this has been The Shooting Show. If you aren't a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.